Hey y'all. Well, I came across to see if I need to water. But no, you can see how, how damp everything still is. This is our overwinter garden. And uh, I'm pleased. I mean, we've, not everything has lived, but a lot of it has lived. So we're good. We lost a, we lost some of our little seedlings and spots here and there. I've still got to, or Chelsea and I still have to finish putting our, um, our saw, you can see the sawdust. She's done most of this and we have a pile of it over there that we're just going to go ahead and put in the rows between the plants and that will help with a couple of things. Of course it will help with with weeds but it will also help with keeping everything moist and it won't be long before we will actually be covering these little guys over with um, the little white garden cloth this winter. These look really good. I believe these are snapdragons. But um yeah, these guys are putting their roots down nicely, which tells me we'll have a nice stand of them this spring. There's an empty spot where a lot died out. Here and there, we're just going to have some bare spots, but this is our first time attempting to grow these over overwinter plants like this. And we'll be, actually, we'll be growing every one of these again in the spring. Um, on the other side of the road for our U cut. <laughs> Chelsea is putting the um, sawdust down right here completely. She gets distracted. She's like her mama. But um, anyway, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Everything will everything that we're growing over here will actually start again on the other side, and then they will. Um, there's more that will not overwinter here because our zone is zone 7A and some things will not survive under 7B or 8. So we're not starting those to overwinter. We'll just be doing those this spring. But these look like they've come up fairly decently. They're thick, they're thick, but that's okay. We'll thin them this spring after they've overwintered. Um, and we're gonna be planting a whole lot more of these. Let me see, these are, let me see if I can remember the name of them. Um, calendula, these are calendula. So, got a decent stand of these. I'll take it. And I don't know if we can, this spring, I don't know if we'll be able to pull these up gently enough to replant them in the bare spots. We will probably attempt doing that. If we can't, at least, you know, we've attempted it. And then you kind of have to just get down here pretty close. It's hard to see these little plants. Of course, that's grass, but uh, these little bitty plants. This little bed doesn't look like they survived really, really well. There's just one here and there. But, um, I think this is the Dora. Down here there's quite a few. Which is like a, a false Queen Anne's lace. And then on down through here, whatever these are, did okay. And these guys did okay. And these are bachelor's buttons that were direct sewn. And um, yeah, they're like the calendula. They're coming up in little clumps. So we'll have to thin them this spring and hopefully we can gently thin them and just reset them. That would be nice. But it looks like we have, you know, a decent amount up 
but I'm not going to need to water tonight. Maybe tomorrow. You can see the dark, you know, the darkness of the dirt. But we've definitely got to come over and finish putting this down. This is the, the sawdust, and it's older. Um, it's been sitting over beside the sawmill for about a year, so I don't have to worry about it pulling nitrogen out of the soil. Look at these guys. <laughs> these funny little dudes are blooming. They're really confused, but they're pretty. They're sweet little things, but they will overwinter. They'll set down some, their, their little roots. We'll protect them with the, the white cloth. And that's basically to protect them, not from the cold so much, because they are a cool season hardy annual. They, since uh, we're in a zone that they can survive in, we will, um, they'll come back in the spring and be ready to start blooming probably by the end of April or early May. Um, it's just particular to this type of flower. And, um, but the white, the white cloth will basically just protect them from just the harshest weather and from deer and from hopefully groundhogs um, and anything that might just decide to nosh on them this winter. And over here we have another row, I think partly snaps, and partly I don't remember. <laughs> I would have to, uh, I, I don't rec because this is really our first year um, growing these little dudes, but they're doing well, whatever this is. Um, I don't so much recognize them by their early leaves. So next year I should have a better understanding of what they look like early on. These guys are really big. So they really put on some some height since we set these out. Yay! And then these little guys over here they're just little round creatures. And they looked so bad when we first set them out because when even when we watered them in, they just got muddy and yeah, and uh, kind of stuck to the the dirt. You can see this, but he's alive. He's he's still doing. And there's a whole little row, and they look pretty good. So. And now the, all of those rows over there are empty, and that row is empty. And that's where all of our um, direct sow seedlings will be, our seeds will be going this week as soon as it dries up and we can get them in the ground. We'll have to keep them watered in well until they get established. But yeah, I feel really optimistic. I think this is going to be this is going to be good. I have grown the cool season hardy annuals, but I've never grown them, you know, in this volume. I've just grown, and, and actually I've never put them out to overwinter. I have only ever grown them early, early spring and set them out, you know, I think it's like six weeks before the, the first or the last frost. So, well, y'all, I'm pleased. We've got to this week also. We've got to get our our um, walkways hoed down so that they're nice and uh, flat. And that's just so that when the grass grows, it'll be easy to mow and easier to walk on. But still a lot to do over here before winter. But we are nearing the end of the season. We are reaching that time when um, everything gets covered over. And basically, we don't have to think so much about it until spring. But Hugh and I, <laughs> we, 
we had to go to Lowe's today and get some insulation and we went to the habitat store and got a couple of doors um, all this and then to the hardware store to get some um, I hear my doggies you must have let them out to get some electrical supplies and so he's been he's been working downstairs on our cool room for the last couple of days and uh, that's exciting that's exciting that will be ready to roll with this winter and the the grow room actually I'll be using that this winter there he is he's up there getting in the mail hi pops he doesn't hear a word I'm saying he sees me waving at him though <laughs> Oh gracious. But the exciting the exciting part is that we'll have the grow room ready and we're going to actually attempt growing our lisianthus. The lisianthus takes 16 weeks from the time you first put the seed and before they can even be transplanted out to the garden. So December is when we'll start our little seedlings, our little seed, and we'll be planting our lisianthus in um, March and we'll see how we can do with that that's exciting I, th I think it's a challenge just to see that if we can grow the lisianthus from seed it's apparently something that a lot of people don't attempt because it is so time-consuming and they're so uh, fragile and fussy but we're gonna do it I'm determined hi pops I did not have to water Everything's still nice and damp. You didn't have to water? No. Probably have to water tomorrow, though. Yeah. I think so. Here's your junk mail. Here's my junk mail. All right. We'll take my junk mail. Political and more political. All right. Over there's my beautiful barn. And Chelsea's little, little shed. And Chelsea's little house. And over there's ours. But yeah, I hope y'all are having a beautiful evening. I came out just expecting it to be as hot as it was earlier in the day, and it's almost sweater weather. So I'll have to remember that when I come out this late again, especially to water, it'll be chilly. All right, you want to ride with me? I guess. <laughs> I was tired today, so I actually drove over. I figured you was watering. <laughs> That's kind of sad, isn't it? You took so long, I figured you was water. To drive across the road. <laughs> All right, y'all. Love you much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.